Aloha Honolulu Data here with episode 22 of the Honolulu Huskies Custom Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode. Oh boy, we are entering the 2027 off season. We had another great regular season winning our second straight President's Trophy, but once again lost in the second round and once again to the hands of the San Jose Sharks as we were taken out in six games after sweeping the Calgary Flames in the first round. So last episode I said, boys, what are your suggestions? I need to hear from you. And you guys came through. Thank you for all of the comments in the last episode. Let's start going through them right now. First one, a book of a comment from Michael Sylvia. He says, go ahead and fire the head coach. Bang, gone. You need to get a coach that will have five stars or close to it with your key core players. Silver, Pelic, Wong, Tolvanen, maybe Rantanen. For sure, looking for that plus five. Maintain five stars with Limbach and Anderson. Great. Ideally, at least an A on teaching and influence. Yes. Pelic is ready for the second line. I think he means Ezra Pittis here, because Pelic is already on the second line. Optimize the top two lines. You may also want to buff up the second defensive pairing. Maybe that, I think that's going to mean moving Matt Dumba. You need a strong defensive defenseman with 88-plus defensive awareness to help shut down the opposition. Try auto-rotating the goalie instead of just getting a new goalie. I think it's more the defensive plays up front that is causing most of the issues. As you've said many times, overall it doesn't matter. I think, you know what, I was really sold on, on changing, on uh, trading Ilya Samsonov. I think... It's more the defense, so I think I'm probably going to keep Samsonov, but we'll see as we go on over here. Uh, by changing up the goaltending, I find the AI is fresher and generally performs better. Another way of doing it is manually switching the goaltending after every loss or other loss. That would be good if I was going much slower through the franchise mode, but it would take a lot of time. But hope this helps. Good luck. Thank you so much for that comment, Michael. Next comment from MVL12K7. Echange Samsonov. Trade Samsonov. He is not performing at the level he should. Upgrade your bottom D pair at the bottom six. Try to get one or two grinders to upgrade defensive play. Uh, Louis Alexandre Gelena says you should get a balanced head coach, a defensive assistant coach, and an offensive assistant coach. I think he means defensive associate coach. And for the goalie coach, make sure he has A plus teaching. Reese Garut says I think you need a defenseman focused coach on your NHL staff. I believe that will help your D grow. Michael Bruno Vaselli, I think your fourth line should be guys who take the puck away a lot. You gotta look at that takeaway uh, take giveaway ratio. Since they're not on for a long time, they can help defensively, yes. Anthony Kish says, new coach and more defensive bottom six. Don't give up. And then some other comments on this episode. Foo Cards 88, I hate the Sharks. I feel you. Poppy Black says, literally nobody. Literally not a single soul. Data in Honolulu on top of Diamond Head Volcano. So we got to always set the stage before the game. So as we were saying before, we don't have any defensemen, uh, technical, teaching specialty coaches. It's forward, forward, generalist, forwards. Looking at teaching stats here on the, the coaching staff, it goes B, A minus, C, and B. So I wouldn't mind cleaning house on like maybe three, at least three of these coaches. We'll see who's available once July 1st hits. So we're not really going to concern ourselves with that as of now. All those moves and all the trades that we got to look at either will happen on July 1st or during the draft here. As we said, we have the 27th overall pick. No one said anything about trading the pick, trading down or anything, but I do have to consider that Max Domi has to move on this team. He has a lot of trade value. He'll have one more season at 7.125. He is a monster playmaker. The last few years in Honolulu, we got him just like that. I, th I thought he'd only stay for one season. He ended up getting those 57 points in his first season here, but then went 78, 71, 76. So he is a huge playmaker, and I love Max Domi on this team, but I think that moving Ezra Pittis up to the second line bumps Max Domi out of a spot because I could put Max Domi as my second line center, but then if I put him as my second line center, where does Trevor Wong go, who's eight years younger on a really cheap contract for seven more years, 87 overall, coming off a career-high season. He has 99 passing, so he's definitely my second-line center, 74 points this last year. So unfortunately, Max Domi needs to move. Considering upgrading the second-line D pair as well, Matt Dumba, he was supposed to be a huge piece, 86 overall, everything, dropped down to an 83 now. He'll have two more years at 5 million. I wasn't impressed with Matt, with Matt Dumba this season. So I'm looking to get a better second pair defenseman, like an 86 overall kind of guy. So heading into the draft, that is what we're looking at in this episode. Hopefully it won't be too long of an ep, but we have some work to do. The second and the third overall picks are both up for grabs. So that is something to look at. So let me just quickly 
Uh, if I went to find trade here, would anybody offer me something for Max Domi or for Matt Dumba? I go Max Domi, open block. Okay, there's some offers. We got, I get an elite goalie and two first round picks. Or I get Carter Hart and two first round picks. Carter Hart is my starting goalie. Wouldn't be a bad thing. He's bounced around a little bit. I don't think I'm going to do this, but I just want to look at Carter Hart. I get the 21st overall pick as well. 86 overall. Bad numbers. Nah, I don't want Carter Hart. But two first round picks as well is quite the quite the haul. And then if we go over here to Matt Dumba, what would teams offer me here? I get oh, a lot of uh, 31 trades. First round pick, goalie prospect, second, third. Adam Gaudet in a third, second in a goalie prospect. I don't want any goalie prospects. I get the 23rd overall pick, second and a third. Third with prospects, Dupont from the Rangers, first, second, Biron from the Rangers. Looks like I can get a first and a second pretty much, or I could get a prospect. A decent prospect and a pick, or just a prospect straight up? Oof, that's tough. I don't know if I really want to do that though. I was hoping to trade him more for an NHL caliber kind of guy. I was hoping to make a little package perhaps. So if I go, I can't, um, I can't do player search here, which is a bit of an issue. Maybe I'll have to wait to make that move. But for right now, do I want to trade for the second or the third overall pick? That would be uh, Damian Anthony, a power forward, 42 and 65 last year, similar to Jeff Carter, NHL ready, or Topi Blomqvist, a character lacks size, similar to Patrick Kane. Uh, uh, boy, 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 do I want to trade for Damian Anthony, a right wing, six foot three power forward? That would be nice to get a big boy power forward there. Says he's NHL ready as well, similar to Jeff Carter. It's very tempting, especially when they want to trade the pick, LA. I don't know why they would want to trade it. They are such a bad team. What's interesting is here that I could go, I'm just looking around on the trade finder. This guy Grabevskov is a great player. If I go to him and I press find trade on the open block, they're willing to trade him to me for Cole Perfetti. That's pretty interesting. Just, I didn't realize that you could do that. You could go to other teams and see what is it going to take that I have to give you to make this trade happen. I didn't know you could do that. So thanks to a comment on a previous video from my Anaheim franchise mode that told me to do that. So anyways, Bruins get Gordon McPherson, 83 overall medium elite sniper, 17 years old. My goodness, that is a crazy pick right there. Let's see what LA, what would it take for me to get LA, LA's selection here? If I go to find trade and I go to the LA Kings, I go to their first overall pick, or the second overall pick, their first round pick. I say fine trade. They want Oscar Janssen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But I think I can get this for Max Domi and just a little bit. Maybe over the max salary. That's the only problem. I could take some back somebody who's on an expiring deal, though. Vinny Hinestroza, 6.8 million he's making. I don't know how he got that contract. Could this go straight up? Max Domi for the second overall pick. I'm going to try it out. If it goes, it goes. What do you say, LA? Trade accepted. There's not too much to deliberate about on this deal. I think the LA Kings fans will think that we came out ahead here. So I definitely could have squeezed out like a fourth and a fifth or something like that. But I think that's a fair deal. Just Max Domi, a 70-point guy for a future piece who's uh, the second overall pick who people say are NH is NHL ready already. Oh, that hurts though. Max Domi, thank you for everything that you've done here. Going to a rival is a killer as well, but Max Domi, off to the LA Kings. Thank you for everything you've done here. Four seasons with the Huskies. He was a big, big piece, but boys, the future is bright. Damian Anthony in the WHL, he scored 107 points in 71 games. Power forward, A and A pluses across the board. He's NHL ready, he's medium elite. Let's do it. Welcome to Honolulu. We are proud to select Damian Anthony. 82 overall, medium elite power forward, 18 years old, five star shooting, 80 on the faceoffs as well. He could play center, this guy. That is what you absolutely love to see, boys. 18 years old, 82 overall, medium elite power forward. So it hurts to trade Max Domi. It really, really does. But I'm happy that we got a very good prospect in return. Some looks I couldn't trade for someone who's going to be in the top six. There's no room in the top six. I got to trade for someone like Anthony, who's going to be a bottom six prospect who can grow. And maybe if there's no room in the future, we'll see what happens. But he could be a, a, like an 88 overall third liner even.
But now we got to continue thinking about what are we going to do. So let me just sim the Sabres pick here. They get Blomquist. So he was a right wing playmaker, 82 overall, 18 years old, three and a half star shooting, 88 passing. Good for them. But now I need to figure out what can I get for Matt Dumba. Just that I can't really see trades right now. I have the money to wait. I could wait till July 1st. It's not a big deal. More of my question right now is, do I keep my selection at uh, 27? I don't think so. I think I'll probably trade down. So I'll just sim to my pick here at 27. We'll see who went. 80 overall, medium lead center, medium lead center. Uh, then some top sixes start to go, medium elite, high top nine grinder, yikes, medium elite, top four, high top six. Yeah, it seems like a decent draft, pretty average. 27th overall, there is no one that I want here. The closest guy is Ziyuzin. Says he's NHL ready, similar to Mike Gartner, so I wouldn't mind going for him. But I'd have to wait. He's going at 32, so I'll probably just trade down a little bit. Can I get pick number two of round one from the Bruins? Let's try and do that. Can I get two fourths from you next season for that? Nice. So a first gets swapped for a second and then two fourths next year. The Bruins go ahead and select a medium top six D. No problem with me. Is Zayuzin still here? He is. Absolutely love to see that. I could take the two-way Ds here or the guys who are three bars medium elite, Trent Tangretti. But I'm comfortable with taking this guy, 18 years old, says he's NHL ready, similar to Mike Gartner from Kazakhstan, uh, from played in Kazakhstan or something. Medium top six, 76 overall, sniper, 18 years old, four-star shooting, beautiful. He'll be a monster in San Diego. Looking at free agents going to next season, I saw that the Senators... So Rory Cherry's contract is up. He's a big sniper. It wouldn't take a lot of trade value to get Rory Cherry on the team, but it would cost a lot to re-sign him. I could just trade Matt Dumba for Rory Cherry straight up, but then I'd have no money to re-sign him because... Or I, I could qualify him and he'd sign for 9.8. That's still not going to... Yeah, it's not, it wouldn't be able to... Where would I play him anyways? Just so tempting. Next pick is at pick number 58. So there's definitely some really good picks between now and 58. Davis McDermott, shout out to Doug McDermott, basketball legend. Uh, Sergei Grachev is this from Ukraine. Uh, Zetterberg from Switzerland. Dundas from Hungary. All kinds of crazy people out here. Steven Beck here is a guaranteed medium lead goalie. We have a lot of medium lead goalies in the system. He's 17 years old, so he's definitely far away from being ready. But that's really tempting. A medium lead goalie. Our next pick's at 58, so I guess it wouldn't be crazy. To try and trade up for pick number 51, maybe. May I get pick number 50 from the Senators in exchange for pick number 58, 135, and 197? That's only eight picks. Come on, that's a pretty good deal for you. Yeah, there you go, Ottawa. Thank you very much. And now I get someone else with lots of trade value in the system whenever you got to make those deals. Steven Beck from the U.S. Development System. Welcome to Honolulu. He is medium elite, 48 overall. Absolute classic. Next pick is at 89. Low top 4D, low top 6 forward. Uh, this guy's a gem, but I don't know enough about him. Medium top 4D, Mitchell Kessler. Now that's tempting. He's uh, possibly a 2-way D, defensive zone play, everything. Similar to nobody, 3 years away, 19 years old, played in the QMJHL. Last few years, putting up numbers like that. I don't think he's really necessary to trade up for. That would be a good prospect, but I don't think I really want to trade up for him. I have a lot of defense in the system. I think I'm just going to go ahead and sim to my pick. Uh, Malachi Pitten, actually. Medium elite enforcer at pick 85. So let me try and get pick maybe uh, 84, 83. Maybe pick 83 here from Vancouver to try and get that guy. A medium elite enforcer. That's pretty crazy. I'll trade you 89... And I have some picks next season that I've already acquired. I have two thirds, three fourths, two fifths next season. So let me see if I can throw in a fifth and a sixth next year. Third, a fifth, and a sixth. Just to move up. No, nah, it's even too crazy. Third and a fifth. Yeah, trade accepted. Thank you very much. Third and a fifth right there. Sims my pick at 83. Go ahead and select that medium elite enforcer. Malachi Pitten, the second player on our team named Malachi. No points for him. Not a good skater, but he has the potential. And that's all that matters. He is 50 overall. Medium elite enforcer. 65 discipline, but 80 strength and 76 fighting skill. That's all that matters.
Where is he? Look at that trade value. There he is. He'll, he probably won't ever be anything. I should trade him like as soon as possible. His, his value is just going to continue to drop. Next pick is at 120. Three bars, low top six. Pat Roussel. Uh, but I think I'm pretty comfortable just going to my next pick. Ooh, Jesus Sachuk. Three bars, medium elite. Let me try to trade for pick number 105. Here's this random guy, Tarasov, in pick number 134 for pick number 105. Quite close to fair value, huh? They're just that they're not interested in it. All right, here is the Flyers. No, that's not, that's a better seventh round pick. Here is my seventh round pick next season to sweeten the pot. Thank you very much. Pick number 105 here. We'll go ahead and select Jesus Sawchuk from Poland. Two bar offensive defenseman, so let's see what he is. Three bars medium elite. He is medium elite. Beautiful. 59 overall offensive defenseman. Absolutely love to see that. 19 years old. Beautiful. We're hitting here, boys. We're really hitting here in the draft. Next picks at 120 and 14 picks. Three bars, low top six forward. Man, might as well simulate up to it. Pick number 120 here. Uh, there, my scouts are telling me go for these guys down here. Uh, Bernard Darche is two bars low elite, and then Daryl Wyman is two bars low top six. I really don't need another goalie, even though he has maybe better potential a little by a little bit. I really don't need that. So I might as well go take a shot in the low top six guy. Uh, played in A-plus league, so that's why his stats aren't too great. Why not? Let's give him a shot. Daryl Wyman, welcome to Honolulu. You are low top nine. Bah. For a late pick like that, not the worst thing. Round number five, pick number one. Dash is still here. Let's start sorting by overall a little bit here. Two bars medium elite on these guys. Khalil Dika, ranked 889, is two bars medium elite maybe? In a D competition at eight shutouts. Beesh, in the OHL. Who else has some potential down here? Some low elite guarantees? Here they are, all the boys. Yuri Morozov is a gem, low elite, ranked 227. Uh, there's no one else that's really interesting to me, so I'm going to go ahead and start taking my guys, low elite 57 overall, because I don't want to start, I don't want to take random guys, and then I'm at the end of the draft and I have to trade for extra picks. I don't want to do that when I don't have to. Nobody left who's pinned, so like I said, we're just going to be going by potential. Two bars medium elite is not bad, but three bars low elite is pretty solid. Walker Goddard, two-way D potentially from the OHL. He is low elite. Man, just keep... Oh, and back-to-back -back picks. Go ahead and take the other guy as well. We're just really hitting the potential today, boys. We are ready to make some trades in the offseason or even uh, during the next season. I know Philstrom from Finland. Welcome. He is... Woo! 49 overall, low elite. Let's go. Up to pick number 194. I think uh, this is either our last or second to last pick. Uh, Jameson McCutcheon is two bars medium top 4D. But if there's anybody else, I'd rather take two bars low elite than me two bars uh, medium top 4D. What else do we got down here? One bar low elite, two bar medium top 6. Igor Kabanov. Uh, Marek Shvidziki. Igor is 17 years old. He's actually ranked not too bad. So you know what? Let's go for him. Igor, what do you got? Medium bottom six. All right, boys. It was a solid draft. We got some very good potential. We have a huge new piece in Damian Anthony. Play on words because he is a big boy for sure. Now we're ready to go into the re-sign phase. But as soon as July hits, it's going to be a big fiasco trying to figure out the defense, the free agents, and the coaching. So give me a second here. I'm going to have to go re-sign. Who am I going to re-sign? Sheesh. Kamiski, I'm probably going to let walk. I think I'm going to let them all walk. If I want them back, I'll re-sign them. So I'll just let them, this guy walk. Uh, this guy can also walk. And you know what? Let them all walk. Don't care. The scouts will have to take care of quickly here. That's all done. 16 out of my 20 scouts needed a new deal. So got all those guys signed up. Resign phase here. We definitely have lots of cap space. We're not really concerned this season about any contracts. Sebastian Genze, he does not want an extension. So you know what that means. Just qualify and I'll see you in free agency. I'll probably give him something like uh, three years at 1.5. So qualify and see you later quickly tell you what I'll do here. UFAs, I'll probably go yes, yes, rather no, so I'll go yes, yes, no, yes, no, probably no, no, uh, probably no, then all the uh, all these unsigned guys, 
Uh, I'll probably sign all of them. Maybe not Savatsky or Boost. Boost, but I'll see in a second. Danielson, yes. Kovacs, yes. Unsigned, Damian Anthony, of course, come on board. He's going to be a big piece next season, I hope. Ziyuzin as well. He'll play in San Diego since he's not from uh, a Canadian hockey uh, junior league or anything like that. So I'll take care of that quickly. And even i got to figure out uh, Di Pietro. He does not want an extension. So advancing a day now, Hollowell says the same thing that he always says. Too many players on your depth chart. See you later. Alvin's yes. Anthony, yes. Di Pietro said no to two years at $2 million. He wanted 1.75. Could offer him a bit more. He's a really good backup. I'd like to keep him. Vetrano, you're barking up the wrong tree if you ever think I'll sign a two-way deal. Well, you're depth 78 overall, so enjoy free agency. Kavanov, Woods, Kozvivaba, Ziyuzin, I'll say yes. Kovacs wants to go to free agency as a 23-year-old. Same with Danielson. Okay, they'll quali both get qualified. McLennan is on board. Perfect. So with all that mostly taken care of, Vetrano's going to be let go. Hollowell, I'm not sure if I even need, so we'll see. Uh, both these RFAs are just going to get qualified. I had to release Hunter Jones since my now, now my goalie situation is hopefully going to be starter backup, starter backup like this. So, but if Di Pietro doesn't want this, doesn't want the contract, then I have to look elsewhere. But even if I have to overpay, getting an 84 overall goalie for two years at 2.225 or something, that's still a really good deal. If I go to free agency, I'd have to sign someone at 84 overall. It would take like three, four million. So. So hopefully he'll sign on. Now going back to these prospects here. Boost, 22 years old, 64 overall. Playmaker, 66 face-off. I'm going to go ahead and let him go. Sorry, Nikki. Savatsky, 20 chance. I took a chance on him, that's true. Back in the fourth round of 2025. You know what? I'll give you a chance. Your name is Chance. I took a chance on you back then. I'll take a chance on you now. Carol Heike. Playmaker and extra Liga, 20 points in 47 games, 20 years old, medium top nine. Yeah, you know what, medium top nine is not bad. I'll give you a contract as well. And let me see my defense. Do I even need you, Hollowell? You're crying, but I don't even know if I need you. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If Hollowell signs, uh, I could have Kavanov. Could be six. Uh, Hollowell could be depth then instead. But it depends, though, because Giftopolis will probably be in the NHL next year. So one, two. You know what, Hollowell? You do have a spot on the team. So I just got to convince you with a little bit more money. Advance another day. All these scouts are going to sign on. Hopefully Di Pietro signs. Really would like him to be back up. Hollowell, easy decision. Perfect. Di Pietro says no. Heike, Savatsky say yes. So we still have a lot of money. We have a lot of money. Maybe I could get him... With, I could use the money to go one year, but it doesn't make much of a difference going two years. Because who needs a, who needs a contract next season? It's going to be just Ellis Anderson, I think. Ellis Anderson, JT Miller will not be around. Peyton Krebs, Cole Perfetti, yeah. So Perfetti and Ellis Anderson will be the contracts. Because Anderson's going to cost a good 11, 12 million, depending on if I can get a nice hometown deal or something. Perfetti's going to cost like 5 million by then. Maybe I go one year on Di Pietro instead, and by then Sweeney can come up. So let me see Di Pietro. I'll give you one year at 2.5 million. That's a pretty solid deal. Advance a day, what do you say? Come on, Mikey. Easy decision. Perfect. Thank you very much. One year at 2.5 million. We are ready to hop into free agency. All the UFAs are gone. The RFAs are qualified. The unsigned. We have all the people that we want. Perfect. Let's see what happens on July 1st now, especially in the coaching situation. It's going to be a big July 1st here, trying to figure out everything going on. So all those coaches have not been renewed and boy oh boy so let's check out the team now what do we need to look for what are we gonna look like next season just sorting by forwards here uh, actually go by position of course centers so first second third fourth right there centers i think are set cole perfetti if i extended him right now he'd want 5.375 okay going to left wings we go first second third right wings first, second, or first, second, whatever, 
third, fourth here. Vieir could be that left wing in, that I didn't have over here. It could be my fourth line right wing, left wing. But I do want a more defensive fourth line. I don't know if I am comfortable anymore putting a sniper on the fourth line with four-star shooting. Maybe he plays third line, JT Miller moves on. I don't know, JT Miller had a good season here. I liked having him on the team. He scored 47 points as a third liner. So I have to consider that. Defense now, we go one, two, three, four, five, six. But if Giftopolis is ready to go, he slots into that top six, and then Dumba would be gone. But then just this is the top pair right here. Second pair, Jansen Kovalev? Can't be. Kovalev's not good enough to be a second pair guy. Jansen's barely able to be a second pair guy. What would Ellis Anderson want for an extension right now? Ay 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 15.125 Oh my goodness Ellis Anderson what How could you do me like that? I can't pay you that kind of contract. I don't think anyone can. You'll go to free agency and settle for less probably in the end. 15 million. This could be our last season with Ellis Anderson. I can't afford a contract like that. Sheesh. But oh, we'll figure that out later, man. If we go to higher staff over here, uh, there are some decent coaches here. Damour, Hugo Damour, 58%. Kumiski is 68 like we said. We knew that. We want guys who like our top players, though. We want Skylar Pellick to get a little bit of love here. 65. We've got to keep searching here for the right percentage of 68 on this guy. He loves all the top boys. He likes Lindback, he likes Perfetti, he likes uh, Anderson Silver Tolvanen. Doesn't like the other guys as much. Uh, that's, some, that's something to keep in mind. This guy is the same, Damien Palmieri. 69% for this guy, but he doesn't like uh, the top guys as much. 68 for this guy. There's a lot of 68s around here. I'd love to get some someone in the 70s, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But I'll have to do that off screen because that's going to take a lot of looking at the teaching, looking at the defense and all that. But pretty much we've got to remember that we need a head coach guaranteed. We need a goalie coach with good teaching stats. And we'll probably fire the assistant coach and hire a more defensive assistant coach. Something like that. But we don't know the team fit just yet until we make our last moves. Because I wouldn't want to hire a coach and then it changes everything once I sign somebody or once I trade Matt Dumba. So let's go to player search here, and we try to look for what the comment was talking about earlier. A good second pair defenseman with something like 88 defensive awareness. Maybe a defensive defenseman. I can change uh, Oscar Jansen to an offensive defenseman. I don't know, but let's just look for top 4D first. Let's go for like someone between 85 and 88. I doubt we get an 88, but something like 85, 86, 87. There we go, let's try that out a bit. Sergachev, Clifford, none of these guys are going to come be a second pair guy. Let's start looking around here. Robert Bjorkstrand, he has four years left at 5.9. Two-way D. Can't go two-way, two-way. Need someone, someone needs to be offensive or defensive, and I would change Oscar Janssen. Jake Bean is very interesting, but very expensive. So that brings us back to the refinements here. Like we're, Remember, we were looking for scholarly articles to write a nice essay right here. Let's go for seven's pushing it, but let's say max of seven million or so, just to weed out the people who are making like eight plus. That took out eight people. Okay, good. Let's go down here. Timothy Liljegren, two more years. Bowen Byram, Rasmus Sandin. I don't like these guys on one year deals, really. So let's try going for minimum two years. Now we're down to 12 people. Keep on refining. Okay, okay. Jacob Truba's tempting, a bit old at 33. Ty Smith, Ty Smith, 85 overall, 2-way D, 89 defensive awareness, 90 shot blocking, 90 stick checking, 4-star shooting, 89 offensive awareness. Ooh, I like Ty Smith. Hmm, what did he do last season? 54 points with New Jersey, huh? Ty Smith is not a bad option. He actually came, he was drafted by New Jersey as well in the real world. Ty Smith is very tempting. Good contract as well. That's at the bottom of the list. So let me see, could I get Ty Smith? Would he fit in the lineup? Well, I'm going to get a new coach anyways, and they don't know what they're talking about because there's no coach. So let me see, could I get Ty Smith? He'd cost a lot, but I could trade them that offen that uh, that uh, def the defenseman, that uh, enforcement enforcer defenseman. So if I go here, Matt Dumba, you take Matt Dumba, and I'll throw in Malachi Pitten, 18 years old, 50 overall. That definitely puts the trade value in my favor by quite a bit. 
Do you have any good fourth line forwards that I could pick up? You have Andre Kesa on the block? I wish. Fourth liners. Kernkovic is a playmaker? Yeah. Dylan Gunter is a power? No, sniper. Uh, p -p 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 no one really who's a good fourth liner. Jake Lashizen here. How the mighty have fallen. I miss Jake Lashizen. Boy, 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 boy. So maybe I just go for a draft pick here to make it worth my while. I wouldn't. I could just get him for Malachi probably, but I need to trade Dumba away as well. So if I could just take maybe back a couple second round picks, see what how close that is. Uh, trade rejected a bit low for us. Okay, so this is not a bad deal. I could trade. Maybe I could get a couple second round picks, and I'll just give you back a little bit more. Can I throw in two of my fourths? I'll take a. I'll swap two fourths this year for a second. You throw in another second next year as well. Pitten and Dumba trade accepted. Welcome to Honolulu, Ty Smith. And wow, 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 wow. Matt Dumba, thank you for your service here. Another guy, he took good discounts. I wasn't expecting him to stay so long, but he did. And he was a big piece of Honolulu. And I respect him and will always love him for that. Now, I believe that the bottom pair also needs to be updated a bit, but it really depends on who grows over the summer. So I'm not going to touch the bottom D pair until I see growth, and we'll figure that out in September. Goalies are set forwards now like we said back to forwards 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 that could be the 12 right there with no problem whatsoever but do i want vieu redden and krebs to be my fourth line playmaker two-way sniper i don't know i could trade jt miller third line perfetti is a playmaker so I, just, I could go playmaker power forward sniper if i put vau on the on the third line and then the fourth line could be krebs maybe trade change him no he can say playmaker red in two wave it would really just be a depth signing if i were to sign anybody in free agency but i'm sure there's going to be some very tempting names ty ronning rory cherry nikita listen d'angelo vickers jeremiah gupta Man, there are some beautiful names. And they're UFAs. Sheesh. But look at this. Roy Cherry wants 12.7. Why would Alice Anderson want like $15.5 million when these guys are taking 10, 11, 12? Kiefer Bellows only wants 5 million as an 87 overall. Yeah, he just doesn't sim well. That's why. He knows he doesn't sim well. This guy Barker. Let me just go by UFAs here. Oh, wow. Very tempting names out here. Michael McLeod's a great centerman. Jakob Vrana, former Honolulu Husky. Oh man, it's so tempting to want to go for Rory Cherry, but there's no reason why I should, because there's no reason, no room for him. I have Eli Tolvanen on the first line, and he's making 11 million instead of I'd have to sign him for like 13.2, and that would be my whole cap uh, space right there, gone. Jeremiah Gupta is a big defensive defenseman, but he's a created player. So he takes a lot of shots. He's not really a defensive defenseman. He's a negative three in his career, negative 20 last season. I don't know if I really like him that much. Any better depth defenseman here if I wanted someone for the, th for the third pair? Uh, defensive defenseman Brett Pesci would be nice, but look how expensive these guys are. It's not uh, it's not relative to the, to the actual world, to inflation. They don't increase relatively. This guy's 81 overall, he wants $3 million. This guy's an 80 overall, wants 0 0.8, nice guy. Meanwhile, I go to forwards over here, and a guy who's a uh, 81, how much money does he want? I doubt he wants $4 million. Here he is, 1.5, 2.9, 1.7, so it doesn't make sense. Ah, uh, boy. Do I take a depth forward? It would be like a depth left winger, maybe? Power forward, Jamie Benn, 3.6 million. Evander Kane, Yanmark. It'd have to be a grinder or something. Let me go to player search. Who are the best grinders in the league? I know, um, I know, t -t 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 uh, Tom Wilson's probably the best grinder in the league. Let me just see who's around, because I know the grinders are good for the chemistry and the penalty kill. Tom Wilson, 85 overall. Let me just sort by overall here. Tom Wilson's the best by a long shot. He's making way too much money though. This guy Kennens, who's this? Oleg Kennens, he's a grinder. He was a he has five star physical, ninety discipline, four and a half star defense. Oh my. Terrible plus minus, but he was on a bat on the worst team in the league last year. Michael Furlan, these guys are old, man. Andrew Shaw. Could get Andrew Shaw. He's a free agent. 
This guy McEwen is as well. Zach McEwen is also a free agent, but uh, that forced that four and a half star defense was very tempting. Three stars here. Kennens, four and a half star defense, low elite. Let me see. Uh, what could I try? Maybe I should try and trade for him. Actually, if I try to sign him, the contract could just get matched. But this guy Kennens would not take a lot to trade for. He has low trade value. So this might be a blessing here from the Bruins. Why aren't the Bruins signing this guy? They need him. Let me just see if I can trade you a different prospect. So I'm not fle totally fleecing you. Uh, p -p -p who could I give you? Who could I give you? Woods, 19 years old, 60 overall. Odell is low top six. Lions, 18 years old, 55 overall. And you want him. This is fair. You want this guy. What would you say to this straight up? Trade accepted. <laughs> Thank you so much, Boston, for my new fourth line grinder who's going to be a monster on the penalty kill and defensively. I really, really hope he will be. Thank you, Boston. Going to go ahead and sign him. And now I can figure out who my coach is going to be since my team is almost fully decided. Uh, in the system here, where is he? Kennan. So he was qualified. Genze I need to sign as well. Oh, I forgot about Genze. So maybe VAU stays in the minors this year. It'll depend. But really, I think I'd rather have Ken Kennens over VAU. I'd rather have a, a really good defensive grinder over a sniper for the fourth line. So Genze, now that he is, uh, in, we're in the free agent period, I'm going to give him three years at like 1.375, see if he likes that. And Kennens, I'm going to go ahead and give him maybe something like the same. If I give him one year, he stays as an RFA though, which could be good. I think I'm going to give him one year to keep him as an RFA. One year, 1.5. We'll simulate a few days, and then we can know our team fit to go after a coach. Rickard Raquel and Oscar Clefbaum to Tampa Bay for a prospect and a first. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Genze re rejects, and so does Kenz. Okay, I lowballed them a little bit. I probably shouldn't have lowballed them because I need to get a coach as soon as possible. But uh, you gotta you gotta try it out, right? So we'll try three years, 1.5 for Genze, and Kenz will be one year at 1.650. This should be the day right here. Oh, he rejects, but Kennens accepts, okay, at least. But Genze rejects that. I'm going to go ahead and sign these two guys right here. Eli Sharma, 76 overall, medium top six. And then Gunler, same thing, 25 years old. So why not? Even if they don't fit on my team, really, they can help out San Diego. And they have good potential to maybe grow into something that has trade value down the road. So why not? Free, free, uh... Free prospects right there. Thank you to those teams that let them go to free agency. Uh, why did I advance a day? I don't know why. I'm a degenerate. Need to go sign Genze. Come on, Genze. Three years at 1.550. Kovac signs his qualifying offer. Gunler and Sharma are both on the team. Love it. Come on, Genze. Beautiful. Genze, welcome back. Okay, so now I can go after a coach. Hopefully there's still good ones available. Okay, okay, good ones are still here. So now we got to see who has a good team fit with all those changes made. Is everyone here? Does it show everyone? No, it doesn't, eh? It doesn't show Genze and uh, and the other guy. Hmm, okay, but for right now, i got to sign somebody. So 67 was Kumiski. Uh, McCleary here at 64. He likes the big boys. i got to find somebody who likes as many people as possible. I think I've found the head coach, boys. I was looking for someone balanced, but no one who was balanced was better than 55%. Look at this guy here, Craig Fallon. A, A minus, B, A, B minus for teaching, C for coach influence, not the best, but he is an A minus rated coach, and he has a 67 overall team fit, but look at these full bars here. Anderson, Silver, Tolvanen, Lindback, Perfetti, all full bars. Pittis, almost a full bar, and then Pellick, Rantanen, Wong, about half. Could be better. The only other guy who I was considering was Damien Palmieri, who has pretty much the same stats. He has A for teaching, but C for defense, B minus for offense, and he's a B-rated coach. So I could go Fallon, or I guess I could stay with Kumiski, who he goes full, almost full, almost full, half. Close to full, almost full, full for the bars going all the way down there. So he is a bit better of a fit, maybe, but I don't know. He has the B for teaching, which is not bad. I don't know. It just didn't work out with him. I kind of wanted to change it up for someone who had some full bars. So I think I'm going to try going for this guy, Fallon. Maybe he's not the right guy. If you don't think he is, let me know. I, I'm not afraid to just hire and fire a coach. So I'm going to offer this guy a contract. Hopefully he signs here, Craig Fallon. 
I think hopefully it'll work out for the Lions. If not, then whatever. But I'll see once... Um, I'll give them two million. Once uh, the next season hits, I can check better for team fits and line fits and if JT Miller's going to stay on the team or not with Vieira who has to come into the lineup depending on how people grow, etc., etc. So if he becomes the head coach, I, that means that I still have these guys over here. I said... The comment said that I want to get an, a good goalie coach, a goalie coach with good teaching. Louis Alexandre Gelena said that with the A-plus teaching. Do I keep Cress and Hewitt, who are forwards and generalists? I don't know. I don't know. Hewitt, I'm not totally sold on him. He has the A-plus for the power play, which is good. Balanced. He is a balanced coach, not bad. Maybe I'll fire him and Cress when this new season comes around and we'll see what their actual team fits are when we know what our team will be. But aside from that, I'm going to go ahead and just sim to next season and we'll figure all that out once everyone's done their workouts for the summer. Fallon is on board as head coach. But once everyone does their workout plans and their diet plans over the summer, we'll see who's jacked and who can bench three plates. Chicago gets a prospect and two first round picks for an 81, 82, and 79 overall players, Sorelli Stretcher and Jonathan Dahlin. That is twisted. Two first round picks for that. All right, so here we are, boys, at the regular season. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the edit lines, do all the roster moves, and then we'll see what the lineup is looking like. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and fire Hewitt from the coaching staff. I'm gonna go to hire coaches. I'm gonna see what his team fit was or what it would be now that things have changed. Hewitt, Hewitt, Hewitt. Here he is. He'd be an AHL head coach, Easton Hewitt, so he wouldn't even be able to... I can't even see his team fit with me then. Okay, well, thanks for nothing. You want to be an AHL head coach? I need a new NHL associate and uh, assistant... And No, just a, a new assistant and a new goalie coach. So if I could get an associate coach to be an assistant coach, that would be great. One who def is uh, defensive, perhaps. Specialty and defenseman here. But I don't think their team fits going to be very... Ah, 68%. Okay, that's pretty good. Defenseman, both these guys are uh, defense. 51, chow. NHL associate coach, 68%. That's pretty good. What's his teaching? B-? minus. I could do that if he specializes in defensemen. This guy, Xavier, Professor Xavier, 62%, 52%, 68%, Cristiano Oshi. That's a wild name. C- minus on teaching, though. Uh, 68, B- minus on teaching. Okay, so it's between Lorenzo Grant, who is B-, minus, C-, minus, B-, minus, B-, B-, minus, C-, minus, all Bs and B-, minuses and Cs or whatever. And then Colanos, who is C, C minus, B minus, A, B minus, C minus. Hmm, that's a tough one. This guy is 47 years old. Looks like he's in his late 60s to early uh, mid 70s, even. He likes Genze, likes Perfetti, he likes Pelican Rantanen, which is good. Pelican Rantanen could use some love. Oshi also likes Pelican Rantanen, Perfetti. Genze. It's pretty, yeah, it's actually probably exactly the same. Just has to do with their stats more. This guy's more, he has B minus on defense and C minus on teaching, while this guy has C minus on defense and B minus on teaching. So do, we, do I care more about the defense or do I care more about the teaching? So I accidentally didn't record the actual offering of me of the contract to the, to the coach, but I decided to go with Cristiano Oshi here because I'd rather go for the defensive coach who's an associate coach having a higher defensive rating, and then my goalie coach, who I don't really care about as much, having a higher teaching rating. So Cristiano Oshi, 68% team fit, he's going to be the associate coach. And then going to look at my assistant coach here, who's going to be the goalie coach. I'm going to get this guy Blaine, because Blaine has a 65% team fit and a teaching rating of B-. So sadly, there's it's pretty slim pickings over here. It was either B or B- for teaching, and most of the Bs were like 50% um, team fit. So this guy had 66% team fit and B- teaching, so I said, hey, you know what? Let's just go for him. So hopefully they sign. I forgot to show you my offering them of contract, but I don't think it really made a lot of difference. So here are the lines, boys, moving into this next season. There's still some changes to be made, but here's what we look like. First line, Tolvanen, Silver, Pelic, plus three. Second line, Rantanen, Wong, Pittis, plus three. Third line, Genze, Perfetti, Anthony, plus three. The entire top nine has a plus three. I'm very happy to see that. 
But now on the fourth line, Oleg Kennens. People love Oleg. He's a monster. Four and a half star defense, five star physical. The coach eats him up. Third line, fourth line, whatever. And I am very happy to have him here. However, a grinder only likes other grinders, really. So I could either change Oleg Kennens to a power forward and probably get a zero on this line, or I could tr change Redden to be a power forward or a grinder himself. But even then, if I went grinder, 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 it would probably be a plus three on this line. But it wouldn't be very realistic. Peyton Krabs, he's not a grinder. He's a playmaker. He has three-star defense. Redden has two and a half star, de uh, sorry, physical, I mean. It wouldn't really make sense for me to say, let's go all grinders. But I think I'd be more. it would make more sense if I say, hey, listen, Kennens, I want you to be more of a power forward this year because I know you, you can be, uh, weave some magic out there. So I think I'm going to try changing... Kennens to a power forward. Speaking of player changes, I think I'm going to make a few other changes that are going to be, they're long overdue, that are going to be more accurate to this franchise mode. Duke Silver, I've had him as a playmaker. Look at his stats every year. Oh, last year, 28 goals in 48 games, but then 59, 52, 37, 61, 53 goals. This guy is not a playmaker. He gets assists for sure, but he's more of a sniper than a playmaker. A playmaker is a guy like Trevor Wong, who gets like three goals and 55,000 assists like this, 15 and 59. So I think it would be more accurate if I change Duke Silver to a sniper. While I'm doing that, I think it would also be more accurate to change Eli Tolvin into a playmaker. He does have the capability of being a sniper, but he has 90 passing. And the last, well, every season that he's been on this team, 26 and 54, 32 and 64, 28 and 54. So he still scores a lot of goals for sure but I feel like he's more of a playmaker, especially when you get more than 60 assists in a season. And same thing, exact same thing goes for Miko Rantanen because he gets 46, 66, 62 assists per season. His career, 263 goals, 551 assists. So I think it would be more realistic to make these guys into playmaker, playmaker, and sniper here. Now, some people think that changing player types is cheating, but like I said, I'm not changing Trevor Wong into a power forward or something who's five foot eight. I think it would make more sense to just do this and try and get the plus fives in the chemistry. Now, like, why should I punish myself for EA's broken coaching system that won't allow Pelik and Tolvanen, who are both listed as snipers, to get a plus five? I'll just say, hey, listen, Eli, I know you've been shooting the puck a lot the last few years, but listen, you can just pass it a little bit. And Duke, don't feel pressure... And Duke, don't feel pressured to have to pass the puck. Just snipe it, Bello. I know you can do it. You have the five-star shooting. You can do it. You have 99 passing, but you also have five-star shooting. Miko, you've been a you've been calling yourself a sniper. It's okay. Just go be a power forward or a play. Actually, you know what? Yeah, maybe a power forward's better for Miko Ranton. And he's six foot four. He doesn't have to be because he has five-star shooting as well. So maybe I say Duke Silver is a power forward as well. Maybe Duke Silver is a big boy, five star, sh five star physical. Yeah, because maybe yeah, you know what? That makes more sense. It wouldn't be fair to say Duke, you have 99 passing, but I want you to only be a sniper. Fit, uh, the power forward is like the best of both worlds. You can be a big boy who throws the body, passes the puck, and shoots. So maybe I go Eli Tolvanen playmaker, Duke Silver power forward, Skylar Pellick sniper. That might give it a plus five. And then if I go Miko Rantanen, you are six foot four, Bello, but you also have five star shooting and 92 passing. I'll make you a power forward. I want you to throw around the body this season. Trevor Wong, you keep being a playmaker. Ezra Pittis, you be a, a sniper. And that should also be a plus five. So like I said, it's not it's not cheating. I'm not making Trevor Wong into a power forward here. If I change these guys into what they more accurately represent in their performances, I'm sure EA from two, NHL 07 to NHL 15 changed Joe Thornton from like a playmaker to a two-way forward a few times. It, it's not a big deal. Perfetti, Genze, and Anthony get, can keep the plus three. Kennens, I'll try making him into a power forward. Okay, I'm going to go do that in a second. On defense, 
Lindback and Anderson stay with the plus five. Beautiful. Could be Anderson's last season here. We got to think about that. Jansen and Smith here. Maybe I change Ty Smith into an offensive defenseman. Four-star shooting, 89 offensive awareness. But two-way does fit him more because he also has four-and-a-half-star defense to go along with that. Would it make a big difference if I make him into an offensive defenseman? I don't know. I'll have to think about that and see if it does anything. Oscar Jansen, he doesn't fit on the line. I don't know why, man. I hate that the coach doesn't really fit with him. Unfavored coach, Fallon, great. But where do I put Oscar Jansen? What do I do with this guy? He's 21 years old, 85 overall, medium elite. On the last year of his entry-level deal, the Swiss Bellow. Do I trade him just because of his team fit? I hate that. Like I just said earlier, why should I be punished by EA's broken system and be forced to trade my players? Kovalev and Junior, they're both 81 in the bottom pair here. Do I need to upgrade that? That's a tough one. Maybe I change Pavel Kovalev into a defensive defenseman because he's not a two-way, I don't think, really. How many, What does this guy do a season? Four goals, 11 assists. His whole career, 69 points in 407 career games. Maybe I go offensive-defensive here. I can also change that. Uh, bu -bu -bu and then goalies, we said. We Of course, Samsonov and DiPietro. Special teams I'll fix up later on. Now, in the AHL, JT Miller has become excess. 81 overall, two-way forward. I think I'm just going to have to trade him, unfortunately. I love JT, but... No room for him, really, unless I just keep him as a healthy scratch. I, I do have the money, so maybe I do do that. I don't want to disrespect him too much. Let me know your thoughts on that. As well as Serge Vieux here. He's listed as a depth forward. I feel bad burying him, So, but maybe it wouldn't be bad. He's only 80 overall. Not like he's 81, 82. He could do one more year in San Diego. I think I will do that. JT Miller get called up. I'm going to go change some player types according to what I said before. If you're really absolutely disgusted with me for changing player types, even after my explanation that I gave you, please, like, I'd literally love to hear what you have to say. I want to know why you think it's wrong. Like, genuinely, I'd like to know why you think it's wrong. And uh, if it's really uh, people are throwing their arms in the air and protesting in the streets, then I'll change them back. But for now, I think it makes sense to go change them, and I'm going to go do that quickly. Okay, so with that chain with those changes we get a plus five on the first line so we're playing like 96 196 on the second line there was no change i guess it's because of trevor wong's not really being a great line fit but whatever maybe i'll change ranson back to a sniper to keep anybody from getting too upset but whatever, it doesn't change anything. Third line stays plus three. And fourth line, changing from grinder to power forward, which isn't really much of a difference, makes it go from negative one to plus one. So it's a really broken system. That's why I changed things around a little bit. Like, how could it be like, hey, Oleg, come into my office. I know you're a grindy kind of guy, but can you be a power forward? Coach, what's the difference? I don't know, but can you just call yourself a power forward? Okay, I will call myself a power forward. Zzzit, I now get a plus one in overall. How does that make any sense? If Dale Hunter on the Capitals can tell Alex Ovechkin, who's a sniper, to be a two-way forward, why can't I tell Oleg Kennens to be a power forward instead of a grinder? I don't get people who argue that you can't change player types when they make sense, at least. If they make sense, they make sense. Pavel Kovalev and Junior get a plus one on the bottom pair by changing Pavel to a defensive defenseman. I think that makes more sense. He has uh, he doesn't do anything offensively, so I think it makes sense to keep him defensive defenseman. Give it a plus one. It's really the second pair here, which is tough. Ty Smith stays, I think, but does Oscar Janssen stay? That is what I need to figure out. Even at Ellis Anderson, like I've said. Uh, in the AHL, like I, f I forgot to show you that Malachi Giftopoulos is also an 80 overall now. So what do I do with him as well? I don't know what to do with Malachi Giftopoulos. I don't know what to do with Serge Vieux. It's a bit of a predicament. So like I said, I'll change Ranton and back to a sniper so everybody's happy. But aside from that, I think the team is pretty much ready to go. I'm going to just simulate a few days to see if these coaches sign on. I don't know if that's really going to change anything with pluses and minuses. I don't think it will. But let's just see. I don't feel the role you offered me is appropriate, okay? I have to go give him a ton of money. And I don't really like the makeup of your roster, but I guess I'll accept. Thanks, Brayden. We'll begin simulating through the preseason just to see, waiting for that coach to sign on. Gallagher and Mata for two first-round picks. That is possibly the most shameful thing I've ever seen in my life. AHL top six potential for Gallagher, making six million. You want two first-round picks. That is a sick joke. Jamel Smith in a seventh for a fourth. Okay. First game of the preseason, we win four to three. Damian Anthony scores a couple goals. Thank you for your generous financial compensation. You're welcome, Cristiano.
And Darcy Lundmark, welcome to San Diego as well. Got those coaches signed up. Does that change anything for the lineup here? No, I don't think it does, and it doesn't. So plus five, plus three, plus three, plus one, plus five, plus one. Everybody seems to be happy. Hopefully the coach chemistry is looking good. Maximilian Kress is still on our coaching staff. Our former head coach who won the Jack Adams back in year number one is still our associate coach here. Uh, Fallon, his team fit, it was at like a 68 when I hired him, 72 now. Just that he doesn't really like Oscar Janssen. That's really the only problem. So Anderson, Silver, Tolvanen, Rantanen all get the pluses, which is nice. So the lines will look like this. I'm going to change Rantanen back to a sniper now that all the coaching is done so everyone can stop riding in the streets. I really miss uh, Gilbert Hull, who was my head coach in the uh, Anaheim Ducks franchise mode. After how many seasons did I have Gilbert? Like literally at least 15. But no, more than that. Probably like 18. Anyways, at the end of his tenure, remember he had an 80 plus percent team fit, like 80, 81, 82 percent team fit, and it was absolutely nuts. Continuing on through preseason here, we shut out the Flames 3-0, beat the Sharks 6-1, beautiful. Shut out the Kings 4-0, beat the Oilers 7-2, we're flying with five straight wins. Vancouver Canucks, we beat them 5-2, and Vegas Golden Knights, we lose 3-1, so 6-1-0 and oh through the preseason, beautiful, beautiful record. 10 points in 7 games for Trevor Wong, big boy playmaker. 5'8 with 99 passing. Ezra Pittis goes 8. Anderson Rantanen with a point per game. Anthony goes 6 and 7. Perfetti 6 and 7. I didn't change up the power play though. That's still something I'll have to fix moving into the regular season. Genze gets 5. Pelic 4. Krebs. Tolvan only 4. Lindback. Ty Smith. Plus minuses were okay except for Kennan's here. It was a negative 2. And Ilya Samsonov played well, 937 save percentage, 1.58 goals against average. So I should have done that before the preseason, my apologies, but I'll just quickly go and do the special teams right now. All right, I am very excited for this team, boys. We're looking great. Special teams, we have a plus five on the first unit, thanks to Junior here, the offensive defenseman. Trevor Wong is a playmaker who hopefully just make a Silver and Pelic and Anderson score goals like monsters. Second unit has Pittis, Perfetti, Rantanen, Anthony, and Smith. I think that's going to be how we roll penalty kill i killed myself just to try and get these zeros here combining negatives with pluses and the right permutations i really want to get damian anthony some penalty kill time being on the third line to try and grow him as much as possible he has three star uh, defense maybe it's not the best choice but i don't know if it doesn't work out we can always change it because there aren't that many people who really fit the, the penalty kill anyways. Negative three and a zero on the on the three-man penalty kill. You can never do really mu any much better than that. So I'm not really worried about it. In depth for forwards, we have JT Miller. Depth for defense, I'm going to go ahead and sign somebody. Or it's somebody from the minors. I don't know. Giftopolis, Yerky Engren. I don't know. So I'm going to need your help, boys. I'm going to need your advice on all the things that I've mentioned in this episode. Hopefully you've been keeping track, but I'm liking how the lines are looking. Before we end off, I'm just going to go ahead and sign a free agent a defenseman, which you'll see in the next episode. Not a big deal. I just want to quickly look through the trade blocks and see our own contract and see who should we think about trading in the next season slash who should we trade for. Just as we quickly go through the trade blocks, Elvis Mers Lincolns is there for Buffalo, Ole Ulevi, former Buffalo, uh, Buffalo, former Honolulu Husky, D'Angelo Chikrin, all good defensemen here. Very tempting for the second uh, pair, maybe, if we're thinking about trading Oscar Janssen or something like that. Evander Kane, uh, Gergiev Seneshin, Janmark, what's Janmark? Sniper, don't need that. Jake Bean, Cody Glass, Jeff Petrie, all interested. Jeff Petrie, defensive defenseman. I don't know, maybe for a trade deadline or something. Uh, Tyler Johnson, no. A lot of prospects and picks, of course, like always. Neil Pionk's an offensive defenseman. That's interesting. Four years left, though, at the age of 32. Marino uh, Hronik, who's a two-way D. Four years left, though. Tough contracts. Jamie Benn, of course, power forward. One year, 3.2. He's 79 overall. Hunter Jones got signed by uh, Winnipeg, and now they want to trade him. All right, and then I also saw in the activity feed over here, it tells you people who are also willing to be traded by teams but are not actually on the block because they can only fit three people. Uh, player in pick trading, would you find it here? No. I see you have to scroll down in the message center here. So out on the LA Kings, both Max Domi and Alex Tuck 
are up for trade. So that's crazy. We just traded him there for the second overall pick, and now they want to shop him around. So the Kings, man, they're just a dead franchise. They never made it big with Vickers or anything. Jake Bean, uh, Jeremy Bracco, Cody Glass, like we said, Jacob Chikrin, Strom, Donato, Nugent Hopkins, Jesper Bratt, Danton Heinen, Laurent Brassois. So there's some definitely, definitely some big names out there. If we're uh, yeah, Alex Galchenyuk, yeah. So Jake DeBrus, Casey Middlestat, Christian Juice, Pavel Bushnevich. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So if there's anyone that piqued your interest, but I think this seems pretty good. But let me know your thoughts about the fourth line, about the defense, about the coaching, about the goalies, about people we need to call up, play, trade, any of that stuff. Should we be moving any of our players during the regular season as well? Looking at all expiring contracts, we're going to have how much money of expi- We're going to have $25.9 million of extension. Do I try and trade Ellis, uh, try and trade Ellis Anderson? Try to sign him right now for six years at 13 million. He does want the extension, so that's good. Oscar Janssen does not want the extension. I don't know here. Colt Perfetti does want an extension, seven point two. He wanted five at five. Now he wants seven. Maybe I'm maybe trade Colt Perfetti. I could just qualify him for one more year at one point two. If you don't know, if you didn't know that about NHL, uh, like let's say this season ends and then it, we go to RFA and he wants seven years at seven million, I can just qualify him. And if no one offers me a contract for Perfetti, he'll just automatically sign next season for one year, one point two. So maybe I can get him for another year at one point two. Bit risky though. Uh, Kennens, Peyton Krebs gonna want another couple million. Yeah, so money's gonna get tight here. It's gonna start to get tight as well in the goalie category as well with Michael DiPietro on an expiring deal. So that is where I will need all of your help. Now, just also taking a quick update here going into next season on where our created players are. Mikey Bruno, let's actually sort by overall. Who has gone where? Ellis Anderson's the only 96. Many high franchises now, but he's on the Huskies still, of course. Everyone's still on their same teams. Rory Cherry has signed with the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, he and Derek Mongo... That's a deadly first line. 95 overall sniper with a 94 overall power forward and probably Shveshnikov as another like 92 overall sniper on the right wing. Wow, that is deadly in Carolina. I believe Shveshnikov is on the Hurricanes in this franchise mode as well. That is absolutely crazy. Jeremiah Gupta signs with the Ottawa Senators. We're going to contract seven years, 10.995. Rory Cherry, seven years at 13.4. The pride and joy of Northern Ireland. Uh, and D'Angelo Vickers signs with the Nashville Predators. He goes for seven years at 12.495. So those are some big contracts. Uh, Dinkyo Chong, Keenan Johnson, Alice Anderson are the ones who are on expiring deals. But there are some still, still some great deals out there. Massimiliano Bio, three more years at 9.8. He is uh, one of the top scorers in the league pretty much year in and year out. And he has a fantastic contract. But even look at these guys. Mikey Bruno and Derek Mongo. These guys are... And even Tony Klingenberg. These guys are all Hart and Art Ross, Ted Lindsay, Morris Richard winners. And they're all making under $10 million for two more seasons. So great job to those teams. Also, you need to check out the goalies. And Sandro Tommy is now on the Detroit Red Wings. So he left the Senators. Okay. So, wow, tough time for the Senators, losing uh, Cherry and Tommy. They do get Jeremiah Gupta, but Sandro Tommy signs six years at 7.9. That's it for a 92 overall goalie? Oh, wow. Do I Should I trade for one of these guys? Should I trade for Sandro Tommy? Should I trade all these random prospects and goalie prospects and just go ahead and get this monster goalie from the Red Wings? Six years at 7.9, 92 overall from Italy. Look at the he's like his numbers haven't been the greatest, but he was on a terrible team in Ottawa. I don't know. Is t- I don't know. 536 games and he has a 903 save percentage and a 3.07 goals against average. Those aren't really good numbers. He had one really good season here in 21-22. Do I trade for Sandro Tommy or do I just keep going with Ilya Samsonov? But yeah, it's a great contract. Anyways, these are all things that I need to hear back from you guys for. 
I'll do my best to incorporate all suggestions as well as possible. But thank you so much for watching. I know this was a bit of a long one, but we did a lot in this episode, and I am very, very uh, excited to see how this team will simulate with the plus fives and the plus threes and all that, especially on the special teams. So if you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, putting out daily content here on the channel of NHL and FIFA. More coming in days to come as well, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, hit the beaches here in Honolulu, take some sun, swim around in the ocean, take it easy, and I will see you in the next one.